Hey, Thomas. Hey, Jason. So I'm here today with Jason Goldberg, founder of One Simple Token. Jason, how long have we known each other? Gosh, I think it must be at least 10 years. And I think uh, you and I started working together back on social media and uh, back when we were decentralizing and democratizing the news back in, I guess, 2007, 2008. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. So you posted recently on your Hacker Noon blog on Medium about the fact that you thought 2018 was 1993. Do you really think that's where we are? Uh, you know, I think we're somewhere between 93 and 98 in terms of, you know, kind of equivalents of cryptocurrency and the dot-com boom. Um, I do think that there's a lot of hype in the marketplace, but I also think that this is going to be the year where we start to see some real product-driven demand from cryptocurrencies moving away from speculative to actual utility. And that's what I'm most excited about. And at Simple Token, we're planning to lead the way on that. I mean, we're announcing, you know, many, many companies who are going to be launching on Simple Token to power their uh, cryptocurrencies, power the digital communities. We made 11 such announcements today of startups that are joining uh, Simple Token to build cryptocurrency communities powered by Simple Token. And we've got some big ones coming up as well. I mean, we're talking to some companies who have, you know, millions of monthly users, billions of transactions that we'll be announcing on OST very soon. And you've got the big Chinese guys behind you, Tencent as well, I understand. You know, the guys who are at Tencent have been great supporters and backers for the project. They've been behind this for a couple of years now um, and very supportive on the way. And yeah, we're very thankful for their involvement and hope to do a lot with them in the future as well. Okay, so we've got all these buzzwords. We've got blockchain, we've got crypto, we've got cryptonomics, we've got tokenomics. How do people make sense of all these new buzzwords in terms of building their strategy, their plan, their token with yeah, and I think there's a few things at play here. I, mean, I think first, I think there's just this massive kind of global phenomenon that, you know, we're the very beginning early days of that. It's going to take several years, just like the internet did before everyone kind of got the full kind of, kind of value and kind of, uh, kind of impact of it. And the first of all is that, you know, we're breaking down the notion of national currencies. And for, you know, people are putting their faith behind data-driven universal cryptocurrencies um, that are completely decentralized, not backed by governments. Um, and able to build decentralized applications that also are not kind of beholden to any central authority. Uh, and we're at the very beginning days of that phenomenon. It's a very big, uh, you know, kind of evolution and revolution. And it has the potential to be as big, if not bigger, than the internet itself, right? And so that's why I think there's a lot of excitement behind it. What we do at Simple Token is our token OST is used as a master token um, that's programmable using Ethereum-based smart contracts on open scalable side blockchains uh, that enable any company, small, medium, large size company to build their own cryptocurrency powered by OST. So they get all the benefits of actually having a crypto backed economy um, without all the legal regulatory uh, technology headaches of doing it alone. So, you know, so the central value proposition of, of OST of Simple Token is, you know, any company can launch their own digital currency based on a real cryptocurrency, OST, simple token, which is a tradable token, um, and get the, the benefits of giving their users, whether it's loyalty, rewards, incentives, um, building applications, peer-to-peer -peer transactions, micropayments, without having to build their own blockchain technology. We give them all the tools to do that, and enable them to do it, powered by OST, our, our cryptocurrency. So is the token basically the idea of paying for someone's attention? paying for their engagement, paying for them to get behind your story, your proposition, your plan. It could be. I mean, that's, that's one use of a cryptocurrency or of a, you know, a programmable uh, crypto token. Um, there's lots of other uses as well, whether it's for micropayments, peer-to-peer -peer payments, um, decentralized person-to-person -person payments, cross-border payments. There's lots of different uses. It could be for API calls, for monetizing things that are otherwise hard to monetize. Is a thought around how you kind of compensate people for contributing their data or their time or their privacy. Um, whereas before it was taken for granted that you would give up those elements and your time and attention would be monetized by advertisers. Okay, so here in the UK on Saturday, we had the big shift on January the 13th to open banking, where we've now got an environment in the UK where banks have to share their data by law with any other third party through their APIs. And so in this world of open banking, will we see all the banks to create tokens for their 
small businesses, for their customers around the world to incentivize them to share their data, share their Excel, share their Google Sheets, connect their apps, and basically be part of their, their ecosystem using these crypto tokens? You know, what I expect to see, Thomas, is very similar to what we saw in terms of the adoption curve of the internet. I think what, what that's going to happen is you're going to see progressive startups are going to lead the way. Um, companies that are there to disrupt the incumbents are going to lead the way, while the incumbents are going to protect their existing businesses, but much harder for them to change. And what we'll see is that it'll take some, some real big disruptors coming in um, before the big guys realize that it's either, you know, kind of evolve or fade away. Um, and so I don't expect the big banks overnight to kind of all adopt crypto and tokens. But what I do expect is some really exciting startups to come in, either existing ones or brand new ones, adopt tokens, change the user behavior, change the user benefits, and set a new norm for what users expect, consumers expect when it comes to how they're treated uh, by the companies and the banks that they transact with. And that's very exciting. I think it's giving the power back to consumers in a big way. Okay, so do you see in time, once the old codes wake up, do you think the old codes will acquire the new crypto codes or will the crypto codes acquire the old codes? You know, I think it, it, it really depends. Um, you know, I think in, if you kind of going back to the internet wave, we saw a little bit of both, right? You saw companies like AOL that, you know, tried to go one direction by acquiring an old company, Time Warner, and then in the end it would be Time Warner that really owned AOL um, based on the you know, relative valuations once the market shifted. They have other companies that just sprang up as new companies, say like Google or Facebook um, or Amazon, who basically said, you know, we're going to go it alone. We don't need the old companies. Um, you know, I think, you know, if someone had said to you, you know, in, say in the year 2000 or even 2005, you know, should, would Walmart acquire Amazon or Amazon acquire Walmart? Most prognosticators would have said, well, maybe at some point Walmart acquires Amazon. But now Amazon doesn't even need Walmart. They just shot right past them. So I think, you know, too early to tell. I think there'll be a little bit of both. To me, the most exciting things is new companies that can just make it on their own. It's not about acquisition. It's about building long-lasting value. Okay, so where, where do you think you, you spent last year doing an ICO? You, you put in your, in your posts on your blogs that it was one of the hardest seven months of your life. And I know you have worked on huge numbers of very exhausting projects in the time I've known you. What, what made the OST token, what, what made the, I, the, uh, the ICO just so hard for you last year? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, first of all, we did the, the simple token ICO in a period where the market was very soft. Um, back in October of last year, there were very few uh, successful ICOs at the time. A lot of the ICOs from over the summer uh, were kind of negative uh, in terms of value from kind of their heights from when they went out of the summer. Um, Ethereum itself was very low valued. Um, and, you know, we powered through and we showed the market that we had a really interesting solution. It was all about the community in the end. We built a community of, you know, now over 9,000 uh, kind of active, engaged users, uh, followers, fans, participants on uh, Telegram. And they've really powered us forward. Huge followings on Reddit, on Bitcoin Talk, other channels. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's incredibly exhaustive to do an ICO. It's more expensive than I think most people realize. It costs us over $2 million to do the ICO and do it right. We were very cautious about, um, you know, following kind of at the, the highest standards of professionalism, regulatory advice, because um, we think that's going to come back to bite a lot of folks who don't. Um, but I think the key thing for us is, you know, prove real value. I mean, you know, we're building a real product for real customers. Um, as of today, we've announced 20 companies that are going to be building on OST. and We've got a lot more to come. And, you know, the, the proof's in the pudding, right? The proof is really, you know, can you... And you launch blockchain solutions that are going to fundamentally change businesses and change the relationship between consumers and businesses and businesses and businesses. And that's what we're aiming to do. So when you, when you compare an ICO with an IPO, where you raise tokens as opposed to raise capital for equity, do you think the cost and the process is pretty similar to an IPO? You know, it, it, you know, right. I think right now the ICO market is at a at a stage where I don't expect it to be the same. You know, a year or two from now, I think that there's there's hype in the market, uh, and the hype has you know created you know kind of an asset class that a lot of folks want to purchase um, just because it's a big unknown uh, and there's very little regulation to it. My expectation and my hope is that ICOs end up looking a lot more like IPOs in the next couple of years, where companies have to go through a rigorous process of standards and, and adhering to regulations and also uh, proving out their product utility and ideally even proving on platforms like Simple Token 
uh, that first that there's a demand for their token, and then they built up an economic model for the token before they spin out and do an actual ICO and sell the token to the public. Similar to how companies, you know, today expectation is at least minimum three or four years of being a private company before you go public and you show kind of a, you know, a stream of revenue, revenue growth, and even profits. I think the same thing will and should happen to ICOs. That's part of what we built Simple Token for. We are a platform for companies to prove out their token economics. They can do it on Simple Token in a, a safe, kind of controlled environment. Um, that is backed by real crypto with theirs, ha theirs basically just running on, running on top of our protocol. And I think that's a great place for startups to start. Agreed. So in your, you said the community was the key. You've got these Telegram groups. You've now got 9,000 people in one of the Telegram groups. You've got speculator groups. You've got developer groups. You've got customer groups. It's all evolved very, very quickly. But the community is at, at the heart of it. it Who is... Whose brainchild was that? Was that yours, or did you have to have a community manager in each one of these groups to drive that engagement? Yeah, you know, it, it, we've got a great team here at Civil Token. There's only over 30 people on our team working on the project. Um, we've got my right hand man, this guy Ignis, has been doing this kind of like 24 hours a day with a bunch of other community managers. Fantastic job at doing it. And we really say that you know the community is everything. I spend a lot of my own personal time in the Telegram channel, and you know I think that it's it should be the new model where you know. The community is the one is who brought us to where we are today, and they're the ones who drive us forward. And that's it's it's one of the best uses of my time and our team's time is to spend time educating the community about the project, getting them involved with it, getting them supportive of it, so that you know ultimately they're going to be the ones who are building the solutions on OST. And we need to do this together. We're we're building an ecosystem together uh, of OST powered solutions. Okay, so one one last final question then, Jason, because I know you're very busy. You must go. Um, to all the brands out there, to all the CMOs and the chief executives who are thinking now and considering and pondering and researching and worrying about the future, about tokens, about tokenomics, about crypto, what would, what would you say to the brands out there? What, where, where should they begin? Where should they look? Where should they start? Who should they speak to? What should they read or watch? I'd say very simple, partners at simpletoken.org. Drop us a line. We'd love to talk to you about your token economy. We've got people on our team who can brainstorm with you and consult with you on token economics. We can walk you through technology to, you know, our technology, the OpenSD protocol enables Ethereum to scale um, at a much more efficient manner, um, but still in an open, uh, immutable uh, you know, you know, manner. And, and, you know, it's, I think companies are, they have a little bit of kind of skepticism and kind of cautiousness about crypto, uh, but blockchain, the technology itself is super powerful and we would love to talk to them about ways to harness it. Okay, brilliant. Jason Goldberg, this has been Thomas Power. It's been fantastic talking to you. Thanks, Thomas.